Welcome back everyone. We are looking at our new theme for this month, which is the region, Gronka region of Cremont. Okay, so if someone said Cremont before, they could have said Cremont. Now, I just want to clear this up real quick. Cremont with an E is a style of sparkling wine usually found in Alsace or um, the south different sort of areas and it's a style of wine made by those varieties okay it's outside it's outside of champagne it used to be a cremant de cremant so cremant with an a is the region okay this is the grand cru region they used to make a cremant style which is a lower bar pressure wine from cremant i mean how co how confusing is that so we're not looking at the cremant we're looking at the cremant just to clear that up why are we going into it this month? Well, it's a fascinating area, geologically speaking, and I sort of want to get a little bit deeper into why we bring you wines each month from this area and what, what they mean. Cremont, being a Grand Cru, is sort of nestled right in the centre uh, of the Côte de Blanc. Uh, you have Avis to the south, you have Wairi, spelled O-I-R-Y, to the west, uh, you have Chouilly to the north, and to the east and northeast, you have two premier crews, um, which is Cui and Grove. All right. Now, the geological part I wanted to introduce you to is called the Boot de Serran, which will pop up on screen. The Boot de Serran is essentially uh, considered an outlier in geological terms. And what that means is over millions of years, the, the hill that's known as the Côte de Blanc, which sort of snakes all the way up that area with all the beautiful Chardonnays, uh, was eroded over time. And what's left is this um, raised area. Cremont nestles and sits around this uh, boot with the Serran and um, has some really interesting aspects, beautiful aspects, uh, easterly, southerly and westerly. So a lot of the vineyards that find their way into the wines come from different parts and the two wines we're looking at this month will show you exactly that. Okay, so our first house that we're introducing as a Cremant producer is Bonaire. Uh, it was originally founded in 1932 by uh, Fernand uh, Boucamont, I believe I'm saying that right. And um, they, uh, he's now, you know, been, been working in the region for, for quite some time. And uh, they, they are quite a modern facility right on the edge of Cremont. And his two sons, uh, Jean Etienne and Jean Emmanuel, are helping him in producing some fabulous, fabulous wines. Um, and the wine that we're going to present to you is actually, uh, everyone's getting it, and it has some of the oldest vines from two new Ds in Cremont. Okay, so the wine that we're presenting to you from Bonaire this month is the Grand Cru 2012 Vintage. Fantastic vintage, uh, one of the best on record for freshness and vitality and also long aging potential. Um, so what goes into this is 100% Cremant fruit from uh, two Ludis or two little parcels. There's roughly 50 different Ludis in Cremant. Uh, one is Le Terre de Buisson, and the other one is Le Bateau. So if you're looking at um, a Cremont on the map, and I'll throw, I'll throw a map of all the divided sort of little um, areas uh, and, and Ludis, it's in that sort of western pocket right next door to Wairi. What you get from this is not about, you know, citrus, apple, pear, it's not that sort of wine. It's, it's actually a lot richer and a lot more complex than that. Uh, older vines tend to yield fruit that is, is very much down that path. It's, it's lower yielding and a lot more um, intense in sort of flavor. So I was really enjoying some of those um, sort of hazelnut uh, toast and, um, and just richer, more complex sort of layers that start to unfold. But there's this beautiful mineral dimension that sits underneath all of that and sort of just keeps it in line and pulls it along. So. Um, 
Uh, do enjoy that when you have it. Do give it some time. It looked a bit tight initially, then opened up after about four or five minutes in the glass. The next one we are bringing to you, our champagne connoisseurs, is Champagne Gibora. They're a small producer in Cremont, and they're making really quite amazing, clean, lively, vervy sort of wines. And they focus uh, very much on the quality of their small production. And so I was able to get quite a bit of, in fact, all of what came into Australia before it hit anywhere else. So I was really excited to have this for you. They are fifth gen, they're uh, based in Cremont, but I think they buy a little bit of fruit from uh, neighboring Shuyi and Huayri, and uh, they have some uh, phenomenal wines that they make. The wine we have from Champagne Gibora is the Tethys. Dot 17. 17 refers to obviously the base here, and then we've got some reserve wines from 14, 15, and 16. Tethys is actually a Greek name, which is the Greek goddess of the sea, and um, it sort of really relates back to the Mesozoic era where um, in which champagne was originally formed. So we have here essentially a bit of a cheat champagne because it's not a pure Cremant wine. There's a little bit of Shuyi and there's a little bit of Wairi as well. But what I wanted to highlight is the blend and how Cremant works so beautifully in a blend with, um, with, with other areas. Uh, Shuyi adds some body and suppleness. Uh, the Cremant, that creamy finesse that we love. And then Wairi adds a little bit of nerve and tension. It is really quite a citrus driven um, highly sort of aromatic style of wine with um, uh, so much of those, those green citrus notes that keep playing with each other, some herbal edges too as well. It's the complete contrast to the Bonaire. Uh, the, the vines in this are young, 10 to 30 years old, and these are sort of 40 to 50 plus. So completely different styles. That's it for another edition this month, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. Um, I wanted to just wrap up with a couple of points. These are two, some of the best producers that you don't often see in this country. I'm super excited to have brought them to you. I snapped up everything that I could possibly get. Um, I wanted to make a note of the Bon Air. The Bon Air being a 2012, it's a Grand Cru, it's aged in the cellar for at least six years or more. It's got some more to give. So if you have that first one or two glasses, try it, see what you think. You'll get some of that lazy, rich character at first. If you come back to it after about three days, four days, you'll get this amazing linear chalk, citrus, fresh pear vibe going on, which for me just blew me away uh, when I had it again a few days later. So do try that. Hit us up on socials. Jump onto the Emperor Champagne Club uh, Facebook page and share some of your um, feels and tasting notes and things that you, you've, you've had or even food that you've, you've cooked. Some of you have already been doing that, which is fantastic. Um, and even on Instagram as well, we've got the hashtag Emperor Champagne Club. Our events will be coming around this, this uh, year. We've got heaps happening up and down the country. Do check out our events page and book in to see us and, and come along. We'd love to see you and share some more moments with you. And finally, next month is a super exclusive month because it's all fresh landing from France and no one else is gonna have it apart from you guys. So I look forward to seeing you then. See ya. Just gonna roll into it. Energy up. Okay. Love it. <laughs> All right. They use two um, new D's called. Um, what are they called? Let's get some squats. Get that reflex. Oh yeah. So just carry on. Hip flexors. Mm. <laughs>
<laughs> I forgot what they were called. Damn. You've got Shuyi to the north. Um, bless you.